I know it's for myself that uh, the, the episode aired last Saturday about the wild dog. And the reminder for myself is that the tariqa is based on that reality that the character of a dog is a, something that a creature that we don't consider to be clean but to be extremely loyal. And that why Allah makes a reference in Surat Al-Kahf of the dog. And that is an entryway that you don't have to be a saint for this path, but you should be accompanying saintly souls. And that we are of a dirty nature. So then God brings the door to this reality very low. Not so high that people say, I can't get there. He said, no, the dog got there. You can be at least better than a dog. You must be able to be better than a dog. Wash yourself, clean yourself, better than a dog. <laughs> so it means he makes it very easy for us. It's not such a high maqam and gives such an analogy of something that is considered dirty. Why you can't be better than that? And the most important, as soon as the episode airs, then a reminder that everybody begins to become angry. And there are no angry dogs allowed to accompany shaykhs. And what they want to bring out of the uh, character is that your characters, your, your angers, your issues is what God wants to show. That's what makes it to be dirty. That dog has an extreme loyalty but at any moment if it becomes angered it eat your face. So all over the Middle Eastern wars they said the most horrific part of those wars were not the killing of each other they were killing but the aftermath of dogs coming and eating people and they start from soft tissue. So that character that you flip on a dime from being loyal to being aggressive that you're going to eat your master, God says, no, 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 <laughs> this character is not going to be like that in my paradise. Sit with them, they have a way of training you to be loyal and good character. Have a sense of commitment in our lives to the Divine, the loyalty to the Divine, loyalty to what's good, loyalty to good characteristics and that never to use your mouth and your hands against that reality. Otherwise what separates us from the dog? You're just more trained, you have the ability to do certain tricks where Allah is reminding you, no, no, don't get angry. So you see like right after the episode people are firing off emails, hey Shaykh I asked three times got no response, what kind of group is this? It's exactly the group you're supposed to be in to show this exact crazy character of yours of emailing ten times that you want something or getting angry. Can you imagine, God forbid, actually getting angry at a shaykh in the, in the face of a shaykh? You think this is a characteristic from paradise? Or Allah showing, oh you're no better than a dog. Look the dog at least he can be trained that he would never bite. You see the police dogs? They would never bite the police. They train them, they take them home, they love them so much. But you try to attack that police officer and that dog will rip you to pieces. This is what Allah is showing, this characteristic of a nobleman, of a chivalrous character. You don't use your mouth and hands against the innocents. You don't immediately revert to your lowest characteristic the minute you don't get something you want. But this is a path of chivalry. Futuah. This is the way in which Imam Ali brought this correct, this characteristic, la fata illa Ali, there's no sword except the sword and there's no way of futuwa except what was established by the Holy Companions and Prophet gave the secret to Imam Ali trained them in this chivalrous way in which they're not wild, they're not crazy beasts that they control their mouth and their hands and they bite down. If you have anger, swallow it and bite it. 
and bring it out into your meditation but never out through your mouth and hands at people. Always a reminder for myself, as soon as the episode airs you get 10 different things happening it's like, you didn't just watch that or you actually watched it, you got inspired to fire off uh, your crazy personalities. So means this, this testing is so real and, and so precise. You'll see an episode airs and boom, all of the issues that everybody was facing were addressed in the episode. Because whom inspires the episode and whom inspires the viewers is the same one because it's a school. It's a school, it's not a tariqah, it's a school. It's a school that has no walls. It's a school that is encompassing on this entire earth to train people to enter into paradise. When your heart is clean, your actions are correct, you have no anger, you don't yell at your students, you don't throw things at your students, you don't ever open your mouth to show yourself as something low but always something high, then Allah will open for your heart knowledge. And if you have no knowledge, you tell everybody that knowledge is not important because you have no knowledge. It's like telling everybody food is not important, everybody don't worry about it. We're all going to sit here and starve. As a matter of fact the knowledge is food. So if you have a jama'ah that you're not feeding them, the sin is upon you. A holy jama'ah is one that Allah feeds them from a heavenly table and the food for your soul or their knowledges and they feed you. If you are poor in their presence, that don't bring your wealth and arrogance and your title to humiliate and bring them down. That's what miskeen means, I'm nothing Ya Rabbi, I'm a faqeer, whatever Allah gave to me, am I anything compared to Allah? Nothing. In my life I'm faqeer, Allah al qaneer. I'm miskeen because I'm not connected to anything, not anything real, all the crooks that I knew in my life. Those are not the friends I want to be raised with. So I'm cut off from everyone and everyone in my life has betrayed me. All I have is Allah and His beloved Sayyidina Muhammad <coughs> This is the, the caravan of those whom have been betrayed. Because Allah tested us, Allah made every type of difficulty to come into the caravan and to be tested. Once they became miskeen, yateem, what was the other one? Asi. They became ca captive, means they submitted their will to be nothing. Only those category of people will sit and eat from that food. But there has to be food, how do you have an association with no teaching? So it means there has to be a food in which nourish the souls. If, the, if they're not teaching and sending to the soul then those souls are, are going to other tables to eat. And the taruq is rich, Naqshbandiya is rich in its wealth from dunya and its wealth from akhirah. It has the hasanat of dunya and has immense hasanats of akhirah and if you follow it Allah will keep you from hellfire. So it's not empty. I'm going around telling people this is a darika, this is not a school. No, it's a school. It's a universal school of all realities and the knowledges and uloom is beyond imagination. And every time the shaykh teaches a knowledge it goes on to your soul and from your soul it raises the darajat. When Allah says, come and, and wear all of the best of what you have for the day of Jummah. We said a hundred times and repeat hundred and first time, is, it's not you go get a fine suit and come for Jummah, that's a very zahiri person, that's a dunya person thinking. What Allah is saying, you should have been sitting in the zikr on Thursday night with them and they would have dressed you with the medallions that the angels are astonished. We said the angels do not achieve darajats. There's no angel that came and gave any, any hadith that I got higher. It's like water, they are where Allah placed them. They have different stations but they don't do one thing and Allah raises them, they have no free will. If they eat pizza, they eat pizza, they don't choose to eat hamburgers the next day, they have no will. It's what Allah give them to do, they do. But 
because you have free will. You can take your darajat from zero up to the highest realities. If Allah inspire and give guidance to that servant, so means then these zikrs, these associations, these teachings that they inspire, they give medallions and lights upon the soul. And with those medallions they go to their jummah. That the angels are astonished with those lights and that's when Allah says, wear the best of what you have because you are now presenting all of those to the Divinely Presence. That the angels say, MashaAllah look what Allah has dressed upon His servants, how much He loves this creation and that all other creation is jealous of them. The jinn are jealous of them, the angels are jealous in a polite way, not a bad way. In the sense that what Allah gave and favoured of this creation wa lakul karamna. That's why they were astonished wa isma kullaha when he taught him all the names and the angels say, wow you gave this to them when they're going to make so much fitna. They were astonished that were you giving such high stations and we just do our worshipness with no problems and these people make a lot of fitna because the life is difficult. If they choose to do good I'm going to raise them beyond imagination. We pray that Allah inspire us towards always goodness and to reach His rida and satisfaction through the love of good character and good actions, inshaAllah. Muhammad Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.